Good morning. Well, y'all. I think this is my last sunrise at Ebenezer Park for a while. And I'm not sure how much of the sun rise we will see, but I came anyway. I came a little earlier than usual because I was up and I said, why not get out there earlier than usual? Soak in as much as you can for as long as you can because this will be off limits for an undisclosed amount of time for me, us. And I'm gonna feel that loss. And I wonder if that tree will be here when I get back. And I hope this stays the same because I really like this area. I want there to be like, I vision concerts and some of you have probably been out here for concerts. That needs work. I've never walked this way before, so maybe I take you a tour. Has anybody like never been here before? It's quite beautiful. This is my favorite plant here. Isn't it pretty? The purple like berries. I need to figure out the name. I think it'd be fun to have a little like the horticulture class put names of plants because I want to buy one of those purple berry plants, but I don't know what it's called. Ooh, I wonder how many of y'all have played basketball on this court. Off limits. So where are you gonna go now? <coughs> um, that's actually a good idea. Hmm. So, is there a place in town? Well, of course, there's a place in town. There's places. Where are the places in town? that those of you who play basketball, play a basketball. Where do you play? Obviously it's school. Um, so YMCA comes to mind. Um, obviously the neighborhoods have basketball courts, I noticed, or you can just put it at the end of your driveway or in the middle of the street. How about how many of y'all fish? This is usually where we would go. We used to have to put our boat in the water there. I can back a trailer. Who knows how to back a trailer? Any volleyball players in the house? I know I have some. <coughs> Male and female, thank you very much. Still need to go to your game. I really do want to see all y'all do your thing. That's my point. I would love to see y'all do your thing. I need dancers in the house. Oh, there's the guy. See, one day when I get older and I get to retire and I get to do what I want all day long, this is part of the job. Campground host and hostess clean the bathrooms. Yep, that will be me. That will be my husband. How fun will that be? This is what's gonna be, this is what's gonna be changed. This is gonna be new. This is going away. It's old. <sighs> I wonder how old this is. Either way, it's gonna be gone. And it really does need a facelift. And the playground, and the swings, and the those things called shelters mm. I don't know what else that would be called but either way I'm sure so many of you have probably had many a family reunion birthday party <laughs> graduation parties oh graduation parties won't be out here oh my gosh 
Okay, now you can feel the wind. See, like this is just, mm, mm -mm. Now this, that's my favorite. I don't, mm. They have church out here on Sundays. Did y'all know that? Yeah, this place, mm. I'm just gonna go this way because I feel like I need to have a moment in every little spot. It's like I'm just kind of giving thanks to each of the areas. My kids played on this, so cute. I wonder if they're gonna like repurpose it and just, they think they're gonna, I think they'll keep it where it's at and just make it better. This is fun. How about a morning? moment where you're being still quiet and breathing and I'm um, in motion all around Ebenezer Park giving it one last hurrah we can do this together do hard things I'm gonna grieve like that sounds silly but 100% I'm gonna grieve the loss of this park but I'm grieving it because um, selfishly I feel like it's my space and I get to decide <laughs> It is not. It is for all the share. And that's why I think I love it so much. It's such a melting pot of all kinds of things. Have y'all ever been out here? This will be fun. I noticed the geese are gone. The Canadian ones, not that are not our ducks. Not the laughing ducks. But Ebenezer Park, I wonder what will happen when you come to Ebenezer Park by water. There's that laughing duck. I heard it. <laughs> now probably all I'll hear ducks quacking. All right, so this is a cool spot. I thought about this because I have a kayak. Anybody else have a kayak? Anybody else like kayaking? Whoa, okay. I'm not wearing the best shoes for this endeavor, but this is where you come with your kayak. Ooh. There's a dead fish to my left. I'll spare you. It's very shallow here. Either way, when the water level is up, obviously, you know, this, this is, somebody needs to cut power wash. This is gross. Either way, look. Oh, there's a turtle. Oh, oh, oh. Can you see him? Yep. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> so you're not supposed to swim here. And you're not supposed to fish here during the daylight hours. Huh. You can, oh, there he is. Oh. <laughs> you probably didn't see him. He poked his little head up. This is where you come and it's like a kayak landing. Yep. Makes it easier when the water levels are. Well, either way, just to get off your kayak and onto land is tricky. Um, so I really like this. I've never used it, but paddle boards as well. Anybody like to paddle board? Water sports in general. Anyone? Oh, there he is. Can y'all see him in the water? Mm -mm. So, yep, I wonder what will happen if I paddle myself over here or kayak myself over here. What I think they're going to do is block us right here. They'll have some sort of barrier up. I don't know. I guess there's lots of other places I will find because now I have to. Isn't that funny that we are such creatures of habit seems like that theme keeps coming up habits that means I'm supposed to talk more about it or maybe you need to talk about it y'all need to talk more why is everybody so quiet all the time you don't feel safe I get it but you got to find safe places in big places and so my room doesn't it hopefully it feels safer than some of the other areas of the school but it's not 100% safe but where is in your room in your car like what <sighs> okay breathe Kira <sighs> I hope you can hear me over the breeze but I'm walking into the wind <clears throat> I feel like I need to talk to the duck man 
these other men, these senior citizens, these men who come out and they just, they're the regulars like me. And they sit in their little golf carts and they feed the ducks and they just chew the fat. One of the guys smokes a cigar. It's like it's a community out here, y'all. Camping people, we're a camping folk. Oh, there's the ducks all at once. And see, they have their dogs. Y'all, I'm getting weirdly sad about this. It's okay, focus on the good. There's other places you can go. Okay, where? Well, anyone that lives on the lake would happily give you access. You sure about that? Yes. But when? I can't come and go as I please. <laughs> I want to go whenever I want. Okay. There's other places you can go. So, I guess what I'm saying is, y'all, habits are good and habits are bad. Got to figure out which is which. Cut off, like that dead tree limb, the ones that are bad. Allow room for a new habit to grow. It could be an offspring of that habit that used to be good, but then it turned bad. Can, tur can there be habits that are good, but then they turn bad? Are there habits that start off as a good habit, but then turn bad? Is that a thing? Probably, yep, because we're humans. And that's, that's what sin does. That's what flesh does. That's what humans do because we're imperfect, right? Can I get an amen? <laughs> How are you breathing? <sighs> Even breathing poorly. Oh, he's like. <sighs> um, so with the habits that you have, check them. If you're not sure if they're good, ask somebody. I mean, what's, what, what good is coming from this habit? You might need to make a tea chart. <laughs> um, I don't know. Oh, there's a sunrise happening back there, y'all. I know it. You can tell. How can you tell there's a sunrise happening? Even on the cloudy day. I'm glad I saw yesterday's sunrise. We'll just see the sunrise from a different perspective. Yeah? Yes. A different perspective. Not a bad thing. But we are creatures of habit and we love our creature comforts, don't we? We like to feel comfortable. Do you have somebody in your life that's calling out a habit in you that you need to stop, cut it out, it's not doing well for you? Probably need to think about killing that one off in your life. How are you going to do that? Well, there are these things called accountability partners that are people who love you so much that they're willing to ask you the hard questions. Even, I mean, think of a person in this world that doesn't require somebody else keeping them in check. Like, seriously, like lead world country leaders need accountability. <laughs> and those are all essentially humans. But the life preservers of the world are the people who love us so much that they're going to do the really hard things. They're going to say the really hard things because they love us so much they can't help but to tell us. Because they can't stand us when we're anything less than what they see us to be. Look, at there's the duck man. I have got to talk to him. Because <laughs> if anybody's going to have the inside scoop around this part, these parts, this guy does. He's feeding them. Oh, I just thought about this. Who's going to feed the ducks? He's going to come out here. I know he is. There he goes. Feeds them a whole loaf of bread. And they're so happy. I bet you these ducks will be seeking after this man. I need to find out where he, what he's going to do. He gets to be here even more than me. Oh, wow. 14 minutes. Oh, my goodness. Listen, y'all. Y'all are along for the long, the end game here. 
because that's what matters is the end game. How are you going to be remembered? Why is everything so zoomed in? Oh, wow. I must have touched my screen somewhere along the way. Oof. So we've covered a lot of ground in this one. We've talked about letting things go that you selfishly want to hold on to, but it's not yours to hold on to. And then you've got habits, good and bad, what to do with them. You've got to cut off those old ones. Sometimes you can't have it, you got to get it from the root so it doesn't grow back. There is no offspring of that habit. It was bad the whole time. And then what you do is you dig it up. There's a hole there. You put some fresh soil and fertilizer in there and you plant a new seed, a new habit. And you nurture that habit. Is it a pain in the butt? Yes, it is hard to start a new habit, especially getting up before school to go work out. Come on. Especially coming out somewhere to watch a sunrise. That's a sacrifice, but it's good. It's worth it. It's worth the investment, yeah? And so many of these habits are not costly financially. They're free. It's just the hard one. We have to do it ourselves. We have to find it within ourselves. The currency is us. Oh, here he comes. I have, oh, there he goes. I need to go talk to the duck man. I wonder if I can chase him down. Oh, he's on the phone. Hmm. Nope, can't. I'm not going, I'm not going to go running after a golf cart. New habits, good habits. And you know, if the habit doesn't stick, maybe it's not the habit for you. There's so many other things, so many strategies, so many activities, so many outlets to get this. Hmm. I feel like your culture and mine is in the season of uh, escapism. So how do you escape, right? We escape through our bad habits, our good habits. What are they? So that's escapism. I want to remove myself from reality. This is escape for me. <laughs> Getting in my car, closing my door, and even sitting in my car um, helps me escape. I do that at school sometimes. I confess. I go sit in my car sometimes and I breathe in my car because it makes me feel like I'm not here anymore. And I get alone and I quiet the world, kind of like my own ISS. <laughs> But I'm not being put there for a bad reason. I'm putting myself in ISS. Ever put yourself in timeout? Maybe that's what we need. That's what these 15 minutes of silence are going to turn into. 15 minutes. Oh, and I'm at 17. I need to wrap this up. Sorry. Sorry, not sorry. Some of you are here for it. You're picking up what I'm laying down. Some of you are dead asleep. <laughs> Find the life preservers that have been placed all around you. They're strategic. Your parents, a lot of times, will put a life preserver that looks like them but isn't them in your life that looks like a person. Maybe it's a grandparent. Maybe it's an auntie. Maybe it's a, a, a neighbor. Maybe it's a peer. Maybe it's a teacher. Life preservers look like people. Sometimes we point to other life preservers. Like I can tell you life preservers for me is my therapy. I love, oh, there's our friends. I bet y'all can't see them as well as I can. Maybe that's when I zoomed in. I zoomed in and I forgot I zoomed in. Our friend the heron. Maybe I'll go do this from the other perspective, which is over there. This is the lake club. That's where I could go. And then there's another place you can go, which is if you go down India Hook, like if this way is the dam. And there's a place you can get in the water there, kayak and such. There's bathrooms. It's going to be so crowded because it's so small, but it's so fabulous. Um, anybody live on the lake? <laughs> um... And then there's other places to go around town. Fountain Park is glorious in the morning. Mm, that waterfall, I'm sorry, water fountain. So what are the new habits? What are the life preservers? Look around you. Maybe your life, life preserver looks like your phone to you. 
Now ask who was a fisher person because I need fisher people in my life. I do not like fishing, but I want my son to fish. <laughs> Seems like a good activity. It's a good habit. Because then you can eat what you catch. That seems good to me. So if your phone is your habit, and let's be honest, we all have it, then ugh, the next word that we should be talking about is what I'm talking about in therapy, which is boundaries. What boundaries need to be put up on those habits that are good but are very slippery slopes to bad. I don't know. Like your phone. What's your boundary? Do you give yourself screen time? Hmm. Do you have something that literally shuts your phone off? <laughs> because I'll bet if we don't have those things that literally make our phones useless, like it's dead and there's no power, or it's been stolen or lost or locked up or whatever. We don't really know what it's like to not have it. <laughs> you have to go without these things for a while to know that it's turned into a habit where you're like craving it. Oh, the yellow jacket's back. Of course. Thank you, Mr. Yellow Jacket. This might be what I do on, on class when I don't have a teacher. Just play the video. I talk for 90 minutes. <laughs> the yellow jacket. Did he make his way onto the screen or is he trying to eat my coffee? I don't like my coffee today. I put something in it that made it gross, but it's fine. I'm choking it down. <sighs> Y'all, the yellow jacket. I'm going to end with the story of the yellow jacket, and I'm just going to rock gently. I hope I don't make you sick. And we're going to hope that we get a glimmer of some sort of something. But you know what? I need you to remember that even on these cloudy days, what I'm trying to remember is the sun is still a shining. It's behind there. I can see it. It's like a peekaboo up there, but mm, it's foggy. It's not clear. I want to burst into song, but I will not do it. But it says something like, I can see clearly now. The rain is gone. Mm. I want you to play some classic music. How's that musical list coming? I need someone to help me make that happen. I need music from your family reunion that you like to listen to. You know, the good ones, some classics. <sighs> the yellow jacket. It follows me. Right. Yellow jackets were keeping people, well, yellow jackets make themselves known when, they, when they're around, and they're around a lot at school. I want you to remember that there's yellow jackets, figuratively speaking, in your life. So, like, I don't have a yellow jacket around me right now, but if I did have a yellow jacket metaphorically speaking, it would be that thing, that bad habit, that person, that toxic thing that could sting us and really send us in a downward spiral or if nothing else, lead us into a place where we really don't want to be. ISS, prison, dead, I don't know. Think the worst case scenario. So that thing has the ability to sting us. And it's like making itself known. Like when you have your phone stripped away from you, you once you start to miss it, you start to feel it, right? You start to, mm, I want it. Why do you want it? What's the motivation behind the desire? That's good, write that down. What's the motivation behind this desire? Is it selfish or is it selfless? Is it to help me and others around me or is it to, um, I don't know, any type of deceptive or destructive type of a motivation or elevating self and diminishing others type of a motive. I digress. The yellow jackets of life, we can close our eyes so we don't see them. We have to replace that image of them or that thing with something else. And we breathe in. And as we breathe in, we ground ourselves so we have a sure foundation, our feet. Maybe we're even sitting, maybe we're lying down, but somewhere where we are posturing ourselves to receive what good deep breaths can only give us, which is so many things, so many things when we breathe in through our noses and we breathe wide and big and fully, and then we sometimes hold it 
and how we release that breath matters. It might be fire breath. It might be a slow, controlled, but it might just be easy. And that's what we do when the yellow jacket comes around. We close our eyes and we take a breath as best as we can in that moment. And I don't breathe well. This is why my voice hurts. This is why my vocal cords are shredded at the end of the week. And I'm froggy today. <clears throat> Keeps me from saying it at church. I don't like it. So as you breathe, and now I've got to a record 25 minutes. Yes, look at me just chattering away. I wonder who's still with me. Hmm. Yeah, I'll save this for a day when I'm not here. I know exactly what day we're going to play this one. Or maybe we'll replay it. <laughs> Y'all can pick up what you didn't pick up the first time, the second time. I know exactly when I'm playing this video. Because there's a thing that's happening in my life that... <clears throat> could be seen as hard, but, oh, there's the yellow jacket. Kira, focus on the yellow jacket. All right, I'll get back to that. So the yellow jacket just came back around because he's in, I'm closing my eyes and I'm breathing, but I hear him. <sighs> Did you hear him? I hope you heard him on the video. You might not have, but he's very loud to me. So as I close my eyes and I breathe deeply and well, grounded, I'm inhaling all the good true things that I know. The true things, the really true things, the good things, I'm inhaling that. And as I exhale, I kind of say a little prayer, Lord, like, the, or whatever your higher power is, release, let me vomit out, let me release, exhale out, let me rid myself of any all toxic thoughts. I'm renewing my mind. Inhaling the good, exhaling the bad, or inhaling the positive, exhaling the negative. Um, however you want to spin it. Inhale the good people. Get them into your life. Exhale, cut off the toxic ones. Inhale new seeds of, that represent habits in our lives where we have plucked up and cut up and chopped up, dug up old bad habits releasing those bad habits back to where they belong, not around us, and putting life preservers in our path that would nurture us and keep us safe and tell us the hard things, the blind spots. They would love us when we are unlovable. They would pray for us or intercede on our behalf when we're not advocating for ourselves. Um, they're the ones that point, shove, and direct us into groups of people that we don't want to hang out with, but we probably know we should should, but then we feel a certain kind of way around these groups of people. What is that way? Judged? I don't know. Let's not be those people. We don't want to be judgy because nobody likes being judged. That's only, to me, I only have one judge in my life, and it is a spiritual one, and it is an eternal one. That's my personal belief system. What is yours? Who judges you? Who judges you harder than you? There's your accountability partner, somebody that you will let judge you harder than you judge yourself. They probably know you're judging yourself, to be fair. I hope I haven't made you dizzy swinging on this thing and having it too far zoomed in, but I'm going to have to wrap this thing up. 30 minutes will be my cutoff. <laughs> so regardless of the weather, show up. Do some pruning. Do some evaluating. What areas of my life need to be cut off and burned in a fire? We should have a bonfire. Can we have a class bonfire somewhere? That would be fun. <clears throat> Buying fire moments. Could be family consumer science. FCA. FCA needs to have a bonfire, yes. Ooh, I need to talk to Mr. Abraham about this. This is a good idea, but it's not a safe idea. But you know what? Sometimes you got to get yourself to an unsafe place of growth to do something really powerful. So put those people in your life. Get those accountability partners. Dig into something bigger and greater than yourself because I promise you, life is going to knock you down at some point. And then what do you do then? You got people to help pick you up. Look around. Know that you're loved. You're not alone. That you are never too far away. 
you're always worth saving. <sighs> and breathe well, because while you breathe, you have hope. I love you. Have an awesome day.